As you saw in my previous videos, I'm working on creating furtherance for iOS and Android, and to do that I'm using Dioxys, which is a Rust framework that also works on iOS and Android. So it's perfect for this project, I think, because all of my backend is already in Rust. And another thing you saw in my previous videos was that React Native uses WebView and Kotlin is Java, and I'm sticking to that. We all know that's true, come on. So anyway, here's what I have. Here is the main page. Um, when you click this add button here, that's when this new part that I just created pops up, this sheet, and it's a new task entry sheet. And what you can just type in just like in the main box. So in the desktop app, which I'll show you here, in this desktop app, if you click on the add, then you'll get task name, project, tags, and I think this makes a bit of sense on desktop because there's a lot more space, but because there's not a lot of space on mobile, I thought keeping it just like the main one would not only keep it simple because people already know how to use it, but it would also save a lot of space. So you can just put in test, project, tags, and the rate here and then you can change the start time so the start already starts an hour before right now and we can just change it to whatever we wanted so if we wanted it to be a two hour thing that we did then we set it for two hours earlier and then you can click save you can also click cancel all that does is close the sheet and reset everything save saves the project and it automatically refreshes this history and now you can see our new test project right here. And it was 20 bucks an hour, so 40 bucks. So let's jump into the code for that. So this is basically all the code, this uh, new task sheet component. And I set all these um, or, uh, localization words as variables because I wasn't able to get them working right in here due to the quotes. I'm sure there's a way to get around that. I just didn't really feel like looking into it yet and I'll look into it later. But for now, I just made those variables and we also have the start and stop time variables. And everything that for the looks was basically just done in CSS. So I just set these divs with classes and the text input is an input with type text or doesn't even need a type in Diaxis. The standard is a text box. And the other time boxes are date time local types. And one issue I ran into is that it seems like iOS does not yet support min and max, which is really obnoxious. So I guess Safari itself does, but iOS doesn't. At least that's what I could find when I looked into this issue. So for now, I'm having to actually check if the time, say the start time is less than the stop time in the code when the user clicks on save. And if it's not, it just won't do anything when they try to save it. And if it is, then it will set the start time. Um, hopefully I can remove that at some point if this gets built into iOS or if I find a way around that and just can use the min and max, that would make that a lot easier. But otherwise, um, when cancel happens, then basically all of the variables are just reset and the sheet closes. And for the main save button, it checks everything, makes sure everything is good, splits everything in the text input, and then creates a new database entry for it. And then it also resets everything and closes that and then updates the task history. So it took me a while to get this done, just to get the sheet looking right and to get all the stuff working properly. Um, but now it seems super simple now that it's finished. And I just put it in here. So basically this is the overlay. So when I click on it, this gray background is the overlay. And then this is the sheet. So going back to the code, um, the overlay is only visible if new task is shown and the sheet is only visible if new task is shown, and then it also shows new task sheet. So that's basically it for that. Another thing I wanted to work on next was actually swiping the task history left and right. 
So for example, here in the task history, there's these gray boxes, and I would like you to be able to swipe these left or right to either uh, repeat the task when you swipe right or delete the task when you swipe left. I believe this is possible using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, so that would mean that it is also possible in Dioxys most likely. I just haven't been able to figure it out yet. The swiping and everything is quite complicated. So I'm going to work on that, but I've decided that I'm gonna move it to the end of the project because it's not the most important thing. If I have to ship it without that at first, it's not gonna be a big deal. I can just put those repeat and delete buttons within the edit. And the edit will pop up right when you click on the task. Um, it'll also be a sheet and you can just edit each little bit of it. And um, yeah, so as long as I have that, then I don't think it's a big deal to have the swiping. That's just a nice thing to have. So I could either do that at the end or even make it a feature later after the app is actually released. So the next thing I'm gonna work on is adding shortcuts and adding to-dos because those will both be similar to the add task. So I already have the framework for that. I basically just need to copy and paste and modify some things. And then after that, I'll work on editing tasks and we'll be pretty close to being done after that.